Our speaker this morning has a quiet demeanor and a ready smile and is always willing to assist in whatever way that she's called upon to serve. She's known for delivering the most interesting and intriguing talks at our Tuesday evening spiritual enrichment services, and she has a way with words. Today, I am certain her talk will live up to her reputation. Friends, please help me welcome to the podium our newly installed practitioner, Ms. Carol Charlton, to deliver this morning's message. Thank you, Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Carol. Let me welcome you all to another Sunday morning, special Sunday morning, it's Practitioner's Sunday, at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living here in Kingston, Jamaica. A special welcome, too, to those joining us on the World Wide Web, that wonderful congregation we have outside, d'outre-mer, as the French would say. And a, a particularly special welcome this morning to my friends in the, um, the, back, the back row posse, <laughs> Tony and the others. Some are missing this morning. Now, recently I heard this story of this man whose wife had managed to convince him to go to church with her one Sunday. On their way, um, he realized that his recently acquired gadget, a cell phone, had been left at home. So he convinced her that he had to go back home to get it. They went to the house, and he went in while she waited outside, and he took a little time coming back out. So she went in to find him comfortably seated before the TV in his regular clothes, ready for his favorite show. So you're not going to church? To which he responded, it looked like the pastor texts me. The phone said, no service. <laughs> so, <laughs> so welcome again. You could never have made a better choice. This has been my favorite Sunday morning place ever since that first Sunday many years ago when I came here. Not only is it the opportunity to be with some really nice people who are usually fashionably turned out, but there's always an air of eager expectation, a kind of what's for dinner today kind of feeling. And we know that invariably we leave here filled to the brim, so to speak, with wonderful new insights into growth, and being, how to deal with that financial challenge, like how to bless that annoyance next door or at the office, not to mention those assignments, how to grow into a greater understanding of God and our relationship to that presence and power always available to us closer than our breath. I am grateful for this weekly opportunity, and I'm sure you are too, to renew to refuel and to be reminded who we are and to recommit to walking the path of growth and unfoldment towards that goal that is sure to be achieved by all. I have a personal commitment too, as I'm sure you all do, to keeping on this path and to soaking in as much of this spiritual stuff as I can and to living my life from that secret place within. And it seems that we never get enough of it. Just like how every day you have to have your meals, drink your, is it one and a half liters of water? Breathe fresh air and maintain all the practices to remain healthy. So it is with spiritual life. You never just arrive and stop there. There's always work to do, choices to be made. It's about staying connected and striving for a deeper understanding of that connectedness with the one. It's always that the more you know or think you know, the more there is to know. It's always about recognizing God in every person's situation and circumstance and knowing God at the deepest level 
and recognizing that it is who we are. Sometimes I feel, as I'm sure many have from time to time, that you're just not cutting it right and you've probably missed the mark. And that in some instance, you have failed to recognize God as a source when faced with a finance resource supply issue. Or you may in a moment forget that God is health and get carried away by a wave of information about disease and discomfort and discord and wallow away in that thought. Or you may get carried away by a bout of anger or resentment or unforgiveness, forgetting God as love and peace and harmony. Or I get overtaken by a feeling of not being enough, completely ignoring the fact that it is the Father within who does the work and that we are engaged in a great work which we cannot afford to abandon. Or you may forget Reverend John's assignment for that week, which was an absolutely insightful technique, a useful reminder or method of keeping your heart with all diligence, if you just choose to practice it. And I could go on and on for there are myriad opportunities for us to kind of a buck or two, as we say. This is why the classes and services and other activities which we organize here at our center help to keep us on the path and are so integral to our growth and unfoldment and why each of us should make a personal commitment to support our center for it is life and health and prosperity. And the truth that there is a constant reminder that there's one power and one presence in our lives and affairs not two, just one. And we live in the principle of oneness, dismissing everything else to the shadows which flee away once we turn on the light. Now there's no shortage of practices and modalities to assist us to keep on the track. And just as we may try different recipes to prepare some of those old standard favorite dishes, likewise, there are approaches that we can utilize to help us to maintain our spiritual vision. It is always a really a full-time work. We are never on vacation, as Reverend Dr. Elmer used to remind us. So in this vein, as I drive along the road, whether here or abroad, I'm always intrigued by the messages on billboards, that, that unexpected tagline, and extricate from them some spiritual truth or message or affirmation. So a few days ago, one jumped out at me driving along the Mandela Highway. Choice is a beautiful thing. I seized on it as the title of this morning's encouragement. But a few days ago, I noticed another one a little further down the road. Spice up your life with your choices. And so I made another choice to have us consider how we can change our circumstances by the choices we make to exercise this most powerful spiritual tool available to us. We are born with freedom, freedom of choice. And we will define choice as the selection of that best alternative in any given situation, having regard to all the relevant factors, knowing that it is a starting point of that right, perfect outcome. Our being here this morning is a choice, a choice that we have collectively made to pool our consciousness for our growth, to acknowledge the supremacy of the one presence and power in our lives and affairs, to immerse ourselves in it, and to affirm our intention to allow it to permeate our every thought, action, and experience. Um, in the words of Frederick Bales, one of our New Thought writers, man's power of choice enables him to think like an angel or a devil, a king or a slave. Whatever he chooses, mind will create and manifest. Choice is the basis of new thinking. In our textbook, we read, new thoughts create new conditions. New thoughts arise from our choice to change course, a decision to do something differently and to walk a different path. In the Bible we read, in the book of Joshua, I think, and it's, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, 
whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye, ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And taking a little further, Jesus, our master teacher, is quoted in both Matthew and Luke. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And in the, um, James's epistle, we read, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded person is a restless and confused in his thoughts, his actions, and his behavior. Such a person is always in conflict with himself. One torn by such inner conflict can never lean with confidence on the gracious assurances of the power and presence within us to guide us into the paths of right action. And the term unstable is analogous to a drunken man unable to walk a straight line, swaying one way and then another. He has no defined direction and as a result doesn't get anywhere. Such a person is unstable in all he does. We cannot be both certain and doubting as the double-minded person. And now hear this from Dr. Holmes. We cannot live a choiceless life. Every day, every moment, every second, there is choice. If it were not so, we would not be individuals. Simply put, even if we think we have the gift of multitasking, we cannot walk the path, yet not walk the path simultaneously and do so successfully. We cannot mouth peace while fomenting discord in our thoughts or words or actions. We cannot demonstrate health while daily claiming disease or demonstrate financial freedom while embracing poverty in our speech and thoughts. A choice must be made. We always need to be mindful that we are not working with that we are working with spiritual laws which operate on the basis of precision and must be clearly and unequivocally directed. Thought after thought, day after day, we can ex exercise this ever-present tool, choice. This thought isn't working for you, click. Next, the possibilities are endless. You even have the opportunity of trying on a few different thoughts for size. Someone has like thoughts to Legos. You know those little bricks and connectors children love? Imagine a continuous stream of Lego pieces. We could build as many structures as we can imagine. With each new choice of thoughts, we can build many different structures in consciousness, but we must set an intention by choosing among them to ensure desirable outcomes. Choice is renewable thought, the essence of our teaching. Change your thinking, change your life, or be transformed by the renewing of your mind. New thoughts drop new shapes into our pile of Legos, and when we link these with those we already have to open, they open up to other possibilities ad infinitum. Our mind becomes a playground or a workshop for the emergence of new events. As we connect with the universal mind in consciousness, new perspectives come into view. It is recreating and the act of creation is about growth and achievement of being more. The science of mind is about positive creation, change for the better. Our principle is firmly established in the scripture in Deuteronomy, which reads, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. And. Um, a few years ago, we had with us Dr. Arthur Chang, um, one of our Science of Mind stalwarts, and in one of his writings, he says, and I quote, what we are to choose each day is to become more life-affirming and less life-denying. The essence of our teaching is, is that the conscious mind chooses while the subjective mind responds creatively, reproducing after its kind. 
Thus the call is always to choose and to be present to the nature of our choices. This speaks to individual responsibility. And in our textbook, again I quote, individuality means self-choice. It means volition, conscious mind, personified spirit, complete freedom, and the power to back up that freedom. Choice is indeed a beautiful thing. It blesses us with the opportunity of renewal, transformation, growth, and advancement of co-creating with God. Choice is a gift of each new day. Tear down the walls of fear and regret of what has gone before and replace them with clarity and understanding for all mankind. This is what um, Marsha Sinatar in her book, Elegant Choices, Healing Choices, Calls an Elegant Choice. Elegant choices, she writes, always develops our good. It requires that we have an understanding of what we truly value and hold in high esteem. The elegant choice helps us to become whole. And the more aware we are of what we do, the more capable we are of taking the elegant direction. As we choose in ways we sense are right and good for us, we must keep in mind that we alone are responsible for the consequences. Uh, each day we encounter ourselves in relationships that we have with people and our environment. And our reactions to these are usually an indicator of the work we have yet to do in consciousness. There are those who please us and the ones that we consider to be less than pleasant, who we would like to show with some choice expressions. You know, in comics there are stars and exclamation marks, etc. Or we might wait for the next opportunity to just serve them that right sauce. And sometimes we even dare to ask God pardon so that we can just proceed with our agenda. <laughs> the choice is often quite clear. <laughs> um, as Reverend Elmer used to say, do you want to be healed or do you want to be justified? <laughs> we have an option. Choice. Call it what you will, to see each of us as unique and yet a part of the whole. One power, united through love, spirit, and life. We can learn to look at each other differently. And the starting point is how we view ourselves. We have a choice as to the image we want to project on the screen of our life. So it is important that we realize that we are each truly a self-portrait of God and embrace our accessibility to, to all love, creativity, peace, and power available to us through our relationship with that infinite power, to see those attributes within ourselves and others, always a matter of choice. There's no choiceless moment, remember, and even if you don't make a choice, you're making a choice. In so doing, we become, present to the, we become present to the principle of oneness, that there's only one power and presence, and that in fact there's no separation between ourselves and God. And likewise, none between your neighbor, who has offended you, and yourself, who feel that you are right. Through our relationship, spirit serves us opportunities to let the light within us shine. Thank you so much, ma'am. We may choose to do so or not. Indeed, you, just, you don't have to let it shine. You only have to let it. We let it when we make the choice to express love, forgiveness, and meet others with understanding. We can, and then at that point, we can declare without rev reservation, I am a radiating center of divine light and love and peace. And would you like to say that with me? I am a radiating center of divine light, love, and peace. We let it also when we refuse to be carried down the path of lack and limitation and choose to affirm instead God within is my constant and inexhaustible source of all good. Again, let's. God within is my constant and inexhaustible source of all good. 
or in the face of indecision and uncertainty, we let it by affirming, centered in God, I'm always guided to my highest good. Centered in God, I'm always guided to my highest good. Or um, rather than hurling some choice Jamaican bomb at the boss that just got in front of you, we let it by recognizing our activity, but recognizing the activity and wholeness of God in the particular circumstance, giving us the perfect opportunity to choose a life affirming thought. It's not always easy. But every circumstance is other than good is a call for us to make the choice, to practice the presence, and to identify our oneness with it, and move up a notch in the direction of our magnificence. Make a deliberate choice in terms of your prosperity profile. Choose to experience success and abundance, or language on, languish on the edge. Remember the story of the prodigal son? One of its many interpretations is that it is a creative journey out of lack and limitation into abundance. And it, the change occurred when a choice was made to deny the status quo, the, the predicament in which a young man had found himself, and, and to embrace the choice to access his father's kingdom, even as a hired servant. You will say, I know all these things, but I could ask, how, consist how consistent are we in practice? Practice makes perfect, they say. It also makes progress. It is, in fact, an active practice of applying spiritual principle, like the law of circulation, into our everyday life. Let us remember also that our choices expressing in our word or thought activates the law and brings into manifestation, brings it into manifestation as our experience. Therefore, let us daily dedicate our efforts to activating the one presence in which we live and move and have our being as the one power operating in, through, and all our affairs, in all our interactions and relationships knowing that we are always working with the law. Dr. Holmes reminds us, and I quote, a realization of our oneness with omnipotence brings peace, the peace which is accompanied by a consciousness of power. Through, through, throughout this week, remember that choice is indeed a beautiful thing. We are never stuck in any situation that choice cannot get us out of. You're always free to make a new choice, remembering that while there are consequences, the joy is being true to who you are and knowing that the universe stands ready to honor your choice. The universal power is one of creation, and it operates through a law of cause and effect. Use this power for good, The un by paying attention to your choices. Choose to be loving, generous, and purposeful. Choose to be in alignment with the good and only good. Being in right relationship with your whole self promotes elegant choices and maintains us in a place of right action. The blessedness or goodness of creation comes through the individual who chooses most holy. If you're stuck in a tar pit of past limitations and pain, past failures and frustrations, even that can be, by, can be changed by the awareness that you can recreate your life if you're willing to be more godlike and assert your god power of creativity. You don't have to keep repeating the past if you don't like the way it, was, it has been. You can create the future by beginning now. And those, that last sentence comes from Dr. Chang as well. Within ourselves, we feel secure, and we, move, we will feel secure 
and we will move forward with effortless grace to, remove, to reveal more and more of God. And so this week, I want to encourage you to spice up your choices. And to help you, I have chosen to share with you a set of practices I found some months ago called from the G Gentle Art of Blessing. And I'll just share a few of them with you. And um, it's something that you can find actually on the internet. It's off they offer a practical opportunity to make life-affirming choices in the face of the situations which we encounter daily. Just a few of them. On awakening, choose to bless the day, for it is already full of unseen good, which your blessings will call forth. For to bless is to acknowledge the unlimited good that is embedded in the very texture of the universe and await each and all. On passing people in the street, on the bus, in places of work and play, bless them. The peace of your blessing will accompany them on their way, and the aura of its gentle fragrance will be a light to your path. On meeting and talking to people, bless them in their health, their work, their joy, their relationships to God, themselves and others. Bless them in their abundance, their finances. Bless them in every conceivable, a conceivable way, for such blessings not only sow seeds of healing, but one day will spring forth as flowers of joy in the waste places of your own life. To bless all without, without discrimination of any sort is the ultimate form of giving, because those who bless will never know from whence came the sudden ray of sun that burst through the clouds of their skies, and you will rarely be a witness to the sunlight in their lives. It is impossible to judge and to bless at the same time. So hold constantly as a deep, hallowed, intoned thought that desire to bless, for truly then shall you become a peacemaker, and one day you shall everywhere behold the, fa the face of the very face of God. And of course, above all, don't forget to choose to bless the utterly beautiful person you are. Namaste.